Well, let me first start off and say Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy my New Year. What'd you do for New Year? Steve? I'm always in the house with uh, friends, friends and family. Yeah. Because I got kids, so like we don't do the whole let me find babysitters. You know, just like, <laughs> no, nah, we in the crib, all the kids, bring your kids over. You know, we do toast, drinks, party, kick it, food, all that stuff. So I've been doing that like 12 years. Oh, yeah? Okay, so you've never really gone out no. out for New Year's? Nope. Oh, wow, I'm shocked because, you know, I see you like to turn up a little bit, but you also know how to kind of turn yeah. down and just be, do you, yeah. do family thing. It's always been like, man, who going to watch the kids for New Year's? You know what right, I mean? who so is? So between me and all my friends that got kids, it's like, uh, we're just going to kick it together. Yeah, so no, that's smart. Kids upstairs, you know. Do you cook or anything? Yeah, everybody everybody cooks. Everybody brings food. You know what I mean? So my, we always at my pop's crib. My dad always cooks. Uh -huh. So, you know. And like I said, we just we bring the kids. You know what I found out What's recently? That? You want to know a secret? Sure. It's kind of funny. You know what I mean? It's kind of racially biased, too, but it's a joke. Can we say that in these climates Abs right now? I mean, do you? Yeah. So my I got a, uh, I got a new assistant. Her name's Gina. Um very nice, by the way. Yeah, thank you. And what I found out is that, uh, like like I said, when the kids come over, you know, like they all go be upstairs or y'all in the room or whatever, uh, all the kids or the cousins. I found out that, like, white people ain't got cousins. I'm like, hey, Ryan, what? I'm like, I thought I was I'm like, waiting for something real serious. No. I like was Because like, I'm, like, I'm like, you ain't never, who you, I said, who they used to put you in the room with when all the adults come over and it's time to go kick it a drink? You like, nobody. White people and I do think about it, I'm like, I never really heard no white person say like, hey, yeah, this is my cousin. Think about it. This is my cousin. I was with my cousins. Well, I, okay, my cousins. this is what I will say. I do know us black folks, we do adopt a lot of cousins. Like, No, we yeah. talking about who was you when the grownups is over there and they put you in the room with your cousins or who you ask, like, man, can I stay tonight? No. Or can they, who, where are they cousins at? I, and I got people in my family, and that's how I, I know that, but... Yeah, I did hang with no my cousins, cousins a yeah. lot when do, I was do you, little. I, do you see think Europeans hanging with their cousins? Okay, that is... Yeah. <laughs> oh, they ain't got no cousins. <laughs> I'm not, not going to put that out there. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, but I... That is a really good... Yeah. Question. I mean cousins. Hey, you all got the Gina. white folks out there, if you have cousins, just... Like, leave comments below and let us know. Did no, you show me the pictures when you ain't have on nothing but a shirt and drawers and y'all was little and you was in, in the room with your cousins. Yeah. You ain't got I, I, Okay. That, I mean, good point. Good point. That's a thing to think about in 2019. <laughs> it's not Where's a good thing to think about 2019. <laughs> but I was cousin? thinking about it as we were talking about New Year's because I just had 100 kids at my house and it was cousins. Well, New Year, New You. I, I know that's been, you know, everybody's like anthem and, and, and chant and shedding, you know, uh, uh, you know, old and dead and just bringing out the new. And um, it was new me last year. So it's like yeah, it was new. You it's like last new year. year. Same me. New year. But you ain't but just you, they, they ain't seen me yet. That's the whole thing. They ain't yeah. seen the last year's me. And, and I mean, we have a new season. Yes. Season, season five. five. Oh, I'm tired. Ryan. <laughs> I'm just I, getting started. Well, the thing that um, I I notice about this new season is, you know, you've opened up a new shop without some of the same people that we're used to seeing, and you had to make some pretty tough decisions um, leading up to that. And uh, you know, a big thing about that is the decisions weren't tough. The decisions I was making beforehand were tough. Okay. Me going into a business knowing that business should be run this way, but I'm going to change it around because I want to cater to the ego and I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. That's tough. You know, yeah. me not allowing for a chain of command or any authority to be laid down when I know it needs to be just to get the floor cleaned. That's tough mm -hmm. when I know these things should happen. So me building a foundation, a business on a foundation that's bad and seeing the result of it to where people, you know, crumble my business and I knew that's what it was going to do that was tough so now making a decision that hey this is what should be done this is how we run business this is how it's going to go and this is what you need to do this is what you need to do and if you don't like it leave that's not tough at all because I knew it the whole time so what took so because I mean uh, do you 
I don't want to say regret, but it's like you you went in thinking, trying to th- do more like a family and we're Absolutely. friends. And do you did you learn a lesson from that? Like, you know, don't mix business with pleasure. Like, how, what is I, it? That- I learned the, less, the lesson that I learned was I already knew it was not to mix business with pleasure, but I had more faith in people to be as genuine as I was. Right. And you can't do that. Right. You can't hope for someone to be what you are. You know what I mean? Me, I'm I'm a giver. That's what I do. You know, so, and I'm always going to give more of myself to others, especially when it came to people. Like, I had to step back and realize that, you know, me relating, you know, me, I was relating to these people so much because I hadn't dealt with the fact of, you know, my sister passed and I was looking for that and other people, and in doing that, I have another younger sister, and I kind of almost turned my back on her and family trying to relate so much to these people that I'm around every day just because I was working with them. So these are people I'm calling brother and family and stuff like that, and next thing you know, my relationships are going bad with my real family because I'm so implemented into this with the goal of, man, we're just going to be dope, we're just going to be this, and then next thing you know, Y'all wasn't there for me in in the beginning. I was going to reference that um, and ask you, did you think part of that had to do that you weren't completely healed and people saw that vulnerability and just kind of took advantage in that sense? Absolutely. But even I wouldn't even say that they intentionally took advantage. You know, people just are different. And, you know, I mean, they'll take it an advantage of something just being in a situation. There's people who are opportunists who don't even know they're opportunists. You know, they Mm -hmm. just feel like, you know. They in denial, but this is honey. good for me, though, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. they would never think, I know I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't do this, but ain't this good for me? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So when you're dealing with people like that, none of it is going to be uh, wrong to them. You know what I mean? So all you got to do is they're not going to see the wrong. So that lay part. it down right for them so they just know what it is the whole time. And I didn't do that. I lost behind that. I learned that people won't be as genuine as that. And I end up, you know, continually pouring from an empty glass. And then now... I will never do that. And I guess I had a I had a heart attack last year you at 32 from being stressed out, you know, from dealing with all of this. And, you know, I had people not support you when I was in a bad time. You know what I mean? So the people who you would think would do that. So to have all of that and to know that these people won't be there for you if it comes down to you and them, you know, ain't no bunk beds and no caskets. So hey. you have to start worrying about yourself. And I wasn't taking care of self right. I've allowed it to hinder my relationship all these different things, trying to cater to everybody else, and I refuse to do that anymore. So it's easier to worry about just me when I knew I should have been worried about me first and then expand because now, I mean, I still care about people. I'm going to never not be genuine, but it's like, hey, you got to take care of yourself first. Yeah, speaking of relationship, I I heard around the way, are you single now again or are you still just maybe? No, no, no. I mean, I'm not in a relationship anymore, but I feel like when it goes to say, you know, in reply, yeah, I'm single. Like, that's not, I'm not flaunting that. That's nothing that I'm, you know, flaunting. I'm not single from, you know, being proud. You know what I mean? I, no, I, I'm not. Yeah. yeah. So I was it's just, not like, yeah, I'm single. It's like, I, no, I'm, just, I'm not I in saw, a relationship I'm like, no, he's anymore. not. You know, I don't keep up with people's love yeah. lives. But I also got to, you know, I did my, my little fans, or not my fans, but your fans taking I wanted to take something from them and yeah. see what was their burning, like what are they thinking, what do they want to know? Well, people have known from the last few seasons that I have been in a relationship. I was in a relationship with the mother of my children, Correct. you know, who I've known for more than half my life, and, and we had planned on being married. So to be out of a relationship from that, you know what I mean, it's like, whoa. Yeah, people want to know. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, it's not, I'm prying, it's just, I got to go no, no, with what cool. people. So speaking of the fans, I decided to do a little something different because, you know, for the past couple of seasons, I I have been very supportive of. Absolutely. Thank um, you. Oh, I just realized that that's upside down. <laughs> um, well, this, I, yeah, I it's just It's always upside down I, I, when I, I just come. realized it that. It did it last time. Know, was it? Oh my God. That's my bad. Um, I wasn't paying attention, but no. nevertheless, <laughs> uh, I I took questions from the fans because I felt like I wanted to just do something a little different this time okay. around. So I'm gonna ask questions that they want to know, cool. and then let's just let's just jump right into it. So it says, 
Um, after everything that has happened, do you still trust your crew or are you looking at them with the side eye? This is from Larice Lewis, if I'm saying her name right. It's she was someone on Facebook that I wanted to Well, Miss Lewis, I trust me and I trust other people, not even as far as you could throw them, but you have to do that in business. Mm -hmm. I trusted them as friends and family before. That didn't work out. So, you know, if it comes back to where we can reconcile, and if you forgive them, I don't forget anything, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, But the trust, dynamic is going to be different then. It right? will be different, but we handle it in business. You know, so, otherwise, so now you're not going to – so the level of which you're going to approach it is not on a friendly level. It's just going to be strictly business? Like no, how I'm always, always going to approach things from both levels. Like I said, just being genuine, you're going to – you know, if you've got a good heart in you about people, you're going to never just turn away from that. It don't just make you just fully be snaked out. You know, it's just the fact that it's like, all right, man, yeah, I got my eye on you. And if you think I don't, you're a fool. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? You and if you put, put me for a fool. Yeah, if you right. put so much into disrespecting me and then you think when you're tired of disrespecting me and then you come apologize and then I say, oh, no, it's cool. If you think that it's all good and for and it's 100%, then you're a fool. Yeah. No, I you get know? it. So Michelle Walker wants to know, um, which we kind of touched on, are you going to separate your personal and business life from now on? Yeah, I mean – um, well, I don't know how how do you say personal what personal what? I don't have no other personal right. life outside of the you know. Uh, and then so. part of having a reality show, I mean, if you want to just be real, is I mean, you do yeah. have to add some sense of like open up. You gotta open up about yourself. I mean, because if y'all was sitting singing Kumbaya, right, it ain't every no day, they, it ain't a documentary. Yeah, you know what like I mean? So, no one's gonna tune in. You know, you know exactly. You know so I mean it's you know, like but I mean enough of what goes on already is uh, not even so much drama field, but entertaining. You know what I mean? Right. It is an entertainment show. People see the real in our, they see the entertainment in our reality. You know what I mean? Correct. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, and it's a lot of it, you know, with so many cast members and so many different things and, and things happen. And personalities. Happen. Yeah, so. Yeah. Okay, so she also wants to know, I don't know. Uh, do you regret sleeping with your staff, coworkers, or whatever castmates? Well, break it down for what it is. For one, I never slept with her. Uh, go back and watch it. You never even saw me, you know, fully in one shot, like as if I was. They thought I was naked in the shower with her or something. Like no, we had on swimsuits and everybody was in a jacuzzi. Uh, secondly, she didn't work for me, so she wasn't my staff mate nor an employee. Mm -hmm. She had already moved to L.A., so. Uh, you know, that was no conflict if I did, okay. you know. So they, they think they, they confuse these different things. And the people, these people be watching this show upside down on their head like from inside microphone. the closet. <laughs> you no. know what I mean? So, no. you know, um, yeah. but do I regret, you know, I, I regret being in a relationship and disrespecting my lady in a relationship by even giving any attention to any other woman outside of that. You know, I didn't have to sleep with her to do that, you know, so... um Yes, I regret that, but I mean, it also allowed for me to um, become something different. I grew in a way of, you know, having to admit um, any level of fault uh, on the forefront and at face value uh, when I probably would run from it normally, you know. So yeah. you had to do that. I had to confront that. I had to go home and take what my lady had to give to me because I messed up, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, no respect. I, I appreciate you even answering that question. I don't really get into who you're sleeping with. Um, <laughs> I don't. I, I just yeah, really I mean, don't care. But know? half of that, I mean, and like, like I say, half of that is what they would consider entertainment, you know, so. Correct. I mean, like, it's drama, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, another one. Uh, this is B. Tiny Greer. It's, is, it says, um, are you going to boss up and not let those fools run your shop. I thought as a friend or employee, his staff was too disrespectful, especially some of them slept with other women's men. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I guess so. I mean, I like. I, I guess not let the, the maybe yeah. the new crew, to, you know. No, I, think, I figure she's still talking about anybody old. But like I said, in a yeah. sense, you know, my. Uh, stronghold now is self-preservation so I have to 
make sure that I preserve myself first and, you know, given to everybody and that's even, you know, positions or letting people run over is is something that I'm I'm not doing now. You know yeah. what I mean? So like I said, I'm, I have a we we're opening a brand new shop tomorrow. Uh so my new nine mag is opening. I got a whole larger staff, you know what I mean? I come from when it comes to the show, you saw me not be able to deal with two to three people right. and attitudes and egos and stuff. Like I got I got ten artists there now. You know what I mean? I've got four to five people in administration, you know what I mean, in management and we have professional meetings every day, you know, about how things are gonna be conducted and the chain of command is definite. You know what I mean? It's right. a given, it's on the forefront and it's known. There's no secrets about it, there's no confusion about who's doing what or what's gonna happen. And that's that runs very smoothly because I know how to do it now. I failed with not with not doing it, knowing that I should have done it last time and then now you know what I mean? We have something to give to the world with the best structure that, we, that we've that we had going. And it was just a free fall with all those other people. Yeah, I let them run loose and do whatever. And, you know, it'll seem as if they're running over you and being disrespectful. And that'll never happen. So with that being said, um, someone wants to know, will you be teaming up with Black Ink of New York because they use used to leaders? Yeah. Um, because they use two leaders. So. Yeah, I think again, that's just a um, that's a stigma of the entertainment part. You know, they'll see uh, my boy Caesar in New York. You know, he lay down the law as as a as a whole. You know, what I mean, after he had gone through what I had gone through of people, you know, not respecting what he had, um, and he had just did it in an earlier season than I did. You know, what I mean, but like he told me back then, I mean, I had to learn. I had to go through it to learn it. And, you know what I mean, we always a team, you know what I mean, the the Black Ink franchise, uh, whether it be New York or Chicago, is the franchise. So, you know what I mean, we on 52 weeks a year, mm -hmm. you know, when we go off, they go on, you know. So um, people just know that we all connected through that. But, I mean, Black Ink and Nine Mag is its own separate entities. Well, I just saw, uh, in congratulations to Kat, I saw on Twitter that she's going to have. What you see? And, uh, her new shop in LA and then they're doing a show about it. Where'd you see that? On Twitter. No, I know you what did you see? It was a, a like a trailer. And what did it say? It said uh Integrity Inc or something to that. No, the name of the shop is called Enigma. What I mean you, Enigma. What did you see? I saw a trailer, right? That said what? It said Enigma Inc. and she That's it, that's it. No. They just said the name of her tattoo shop. It said the name of her tattoo shop. And then it said and it showed clips from my show. Was that well? It well, showed, no, it showed a clip from my showed, show. It showed her. It showed and then a it clip. showed a camera so and people behind the happened. camera. And it said, "What coming soon? What's coming soon?" Okay. What's coming soon? I I, I was thinking the show. You would think that from a, a promo standpoint, wouldn't you? I mean, it looks like a, a shot promo to me. It, you show me a production company and a network and all of these things behind that or a name of a show or a franchise or whatever, that's fine. Okay, Best so of luck to a, them. It's just a shop launching. Is that what they it had, is? They, they launched already. She had a grand opening, uh, I think, a few months ago. The shop is dope. It's in L.A. They're doing good. You know what I mean? Great artists. I know some of the artists out there. Shout out to Kevin. You know what I mean? Shout out to Tattoo Pay. You know what I mean? I know a lot of them. Nelly. You know, Nelly just tattooed. Nicki Minaj. You know what they got? But they shopped already open. What did you oh. see that says a show? That, well, Analyze. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Okay. Sounded I, good, I, though. I, I, hey, I mean, I... Hey, best of luck to him. If, if it's a show, best it, of luck to him. That's what I thought it I don't was. know what other show could use my VH1 clips from my show to say, you know... So even the clip with her going and asking the guy to be a part of the shop, that was from your... No, 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 no. Be a part of the shop? That's fine. You can You can shoot whatever. It was shot greatly. It was definitely shot greatly. You know what I mean? I'm just well, saying. I said, show me what you saw that said I this is show a show. Okay, well, right, not, not that it's a show. I don't know. But you said it though. I did because I thought it was. I bet a lot of people thought it was. Yeah, and, and then if I it and if it comments. is, if it is, more power to them. Because I looked at. I the I hope comments. it is. But where did you see? And you looked at the comments and what? And people were like, congratulations on your show. On what? What show did you see? No. I'm Matter of fact, put it like this. 
just wait. You, you wait and see when the show airs. I, hey, listen. If it's about a show, I hope it does. It looked like a shop ball to me. Well, I mean, now you got me thinking. I didn't. I swear. You should think before you 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 say that. I, I swear because I thought, oh, okay. Pull it up right now. Show. You got time. No, I don't really have all that much time. I might have to pull it up off camera, but I did. Show I, me where you see something else that that doesn't look. That's a. It was a great video, shot greatly, edited greatly. But you just came and threw it to me like, yeah. Speaking of that, you know, so and so's got their own show. What show? I apologize. My bad. That <laughs> my stuff got copyrights and and production. I, and, you I know, swear I thought uh, it was. I swear I thought it was. Anyway, okay. moving, moving on, on, man. Hey, so I hope is, it. I hope it is a show. You know what I mean? And if it is, you know, more power to them. Some great artists. Great, you know what I mean? Hey, make it to season five or whatever. You know, I did it. So you know, do what y'all got to do. Okay, but go and on. do your research. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> look into that more deeply now. Moving on, um, the last question. Throw is, that out there, like, oh yeah. And also, man, please. What <laughs> specific events are planned or is being planned for R.I.P. victims of crime, like in the case of your sister and nephew? Someone said they gained niece, or they put yeah. nephew. Someone said I told you they watched. They gain enlightenment, encouragement when. I, they can interact or participate in the matter of victims very heartfelt and supportive 100 percent yeah absolutely i mean it's always different things going on uh around the city you know it's like it's, it's really just about what certain foundations or what people put into it you know what i mean like um we'll be having we hope to have uh the NIMAC foundation launch this year you know what i mean and a lot of that will be for you know domestic violence survivors um and predominantly for um you know women and children uh less fortunate you know uh mostly homeless you know uh so with that there's so many different things for the fa for foundations to do um like i mean but we had they have events like we just had the uh the the gloves up guns down event you know where it showed from all of uh influencers like you know uh what we would promise or plan to do moving forward to help what's going on in the city but people have to realize from the outside this city doesn't get helped unless it's help from the inside and it's a lot more than just marching or doing this or having one event you know what i mean you're trying to break down something that's by design environmentalized to you know put these people out here or the, these kids are out here you know what i mean with the whole they desensitized from you know decades of this you know what i mean mm -hmm. and from you know what i mean from um like i say being a generation being broken down, you know what I mean? Where are the fathers? Why are there food deserts in the neighborhood? Why are, you know what I mean, the uh, why are the guns so accessible? You know what I mean? Why are the uh, the mothers not in the lives? You know what I mean? Why is there a liquor store on every corner? You know what I mean? So all of these different things, stuff as by design, you have to break all of these different things down that will allow for the shooting and the killings to stop because it ain't just going to stop tomorrow when you just killed his cousin yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I, we're going to have to wrap up soon, but I do want to bring this up because you, you brought up a really good point about, you know, putting the guns down. Why did you think it was a good idea to bring a gun or have a gun in the situation, you know, where it, it came to the shop? Because I was reading on the Chicago Tribune and they were saying that, you know, shots were fired at the shop and some vandalism so why did you decide to go that route seeing as though we kind of already have this stigma in chicago about you know violence? we do have the stigma in chicago about that but i also know that you know for the the crime that was committed you know um if i was proven to be guilty of that i would have been locked up mm -hmm. you know so it was a lot of claims about what ryan did and what happened and you know by the judicial system, you know what I mean, I would have got locked up if I did that, you know. I would have got locked up if I was proven guilty of that. You know what I mean? If it was such a Ryan did this right there, it would have been proof that Ryan did it. Not speculation, not assumptions. It would have been proof that Ryan did that. It was a lot of talk about what Ryan did. You know what I mean? It was a lot of amplified, you did this and it had to be, and it had to be this. Where was the proof that Ryan did anything? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if it was, then I would be behind bars, convicted behind it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So to say that that's what I did and this is what happened, you did that and stuff like that, then prove it to me then. 
Otherwise, it's like, how can you say I did this and, you know, there was no proof of it? So, I mean, this, this, this isn't something that can be, you know, just swept under the rug. So prove that this is what Ryan did. Don't give me a theory. Don't put different facts together and then make them be a fact. That's a theory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So prove that Ryan did that, and then it would be case closed. And then I would have to explain that, but there's nothing for me to explain if I'm not even in the court of law convicted behind doing something heinous like that. Okay. No, I got it. That's it. You know, Point so. blank. So moving forward, what in this season, uh, you know, of course people want to know what can they look forward to, or, you know, where they – where is this journey going to take them with the new shop? Well, um, coming back and, you know, taking back over the shop after I left it was um, was just me. Like I said, I retracted to get myself better. You know what I mean? Because along with, um, you know, me not getting along with people, like I said, it was a lot of stuff that I had to deal with by myself. Like I said, you know, implementing things into my relationship that allowed for my relationship to fail, you know, not being friends with people or being at odds with so many people, you know what I mean? I had to look at myself and see, like, all right, well, what do I want to fix about myself that won't allow for me to have all these different things? So coming back and knowing that, all right, well, you learned how to handle business better. You learned how to be a better friend. You learned how to forgive. You learned how to not hold on to this. You learned how to, you know what I mean, even that things down to managing money better in my relationship. You know what I mean? It's like I learned these different things, and all I'm trying to do is move forward now. And if it allows for me to forgive people and allow them to come back in, and that's what it would mean. It's gotten me to a point, as they'll see later, like I said, opening this brand newer, newer shop, you know what I mean, will show just that level of expansion that I've gone through those tribulations, and now I can handle things better because I wasn't at first. Mm-hmm. No, I'm looking forward to because, like I said, I've talked to you guys which probably about almost each season. So I'm hoping now everything is copacetic and, you know, we can really build on the betterment of Chicago through Ryan. and. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I've, I've always been about growing people. And like I said, I've got new artists and I've got artists that, you know what I mean, that I'm – working with and people that I'm working with and I give them my all. I just said, if you've ever gone to that extent with me, you know what I mean? That's on you if you want to trust me again. Mm. Okay. No, I get it. So, I get it. I had to do some changing and rearranging of friends within the new year and you realize people using you and, you know, you, you got to take a stance for yourself. Absolutely. And you got to protect your heart at the end of the day. And you can't let nobody run over you. But it's always great to talk to you, Ryan. Thank you. I thank, thank you so you. much thank for coming you. by. Of course. Um, I'm always, you know, open arms. We got to support one another in thank Chicago. You. That's what it's definitely all about. And, um, you know, make sure – well, I'm pretty sure people are going to tune in to the new season because they want to see – what the hell is going to go on? I just want, I mean, listen, they, they they tune in and they'll see things. I mean, some of the things will be surprising, even from next week, you know what I mean? So, you know, check back in with me then, and then you'll see some things change up that you might not even have expected. But from, you guys are all on good terms now, right? No. Everything's all good? No. Okay, I just opened up a can of rounds. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to end it on that. We're still working on getting... Or maybe not. Sometimes some relationships are just not, it's not repairable and you got to be, leave it for what it is. And let people know where they can find you on social media. Um, I mean, they can always find me on uh, Instagram. I talk back to people all the time, you know, at Ryan Henry Tattoo. Um, also, nymagtattoo.com. You know, if you're in the city, you can always, you can come by the new shop after the grand opening tomorrow. We all open to the public. Uh, Walk-ins are welcome. You know, we have artists on deck all the time. We didn't have that last time to where... People can just come by. It was, it was a, appointment only. Yeah, it was appointment only. So now, you know, it's open to the shop. I mean, it's open to the public. The shop is amazing. Are you coming to the grand opening? Tomorrow? Yeah. I you didn't get an to invite. You, you have one. You sent me an invite? You have oh, one. Okay. You have okay, one. Okay, yeah. I'll come through. Saturday, yep. Yeah, I'll be there. So what? Yep, I'll be there. I'll look at the invite. You see where all the hard work has come to, so. Yeah. You know. Did we answer all the questions that they wanted? Yeah, that right, was out. Cool. That was that was actually all. They can ask me personally too. So. Yeah, so you hit them up on social media. Make sure you watch the show. Airs on VH1. Nine know, eight central. Nine eight central. Wednesdays. Wednesdays. So make sure you guys tune in, um, and we'll keep up with you. Thank yeah. you Thank so you. much, Ryan.
Peace.